What's up, Seeky Nation? Sneaky B here, back with all the news after week 10 of our San Francisco 49ers franchise, where the Niners picked up a loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Next up, we have the New England Patriots, but first, let's check out some of the highlights from week number 10. Vance McDonald and the 49ers offense getting things going early on down to the 13-yard line, and that would set up this first and goal run by Sean Drawn that would put the 49ers on top 7 to nothing a little bit later. Looking to throw Carson Palmer pressure coming and that is DeForest Buckner on the sack. Two good weeks in a row by him. But his teammate at Oregon, not to be outdone, Eric Armstead gets the sack, forces the fumble, and he will recover. That would set up this Phil Dawson field goal to put the 49ers up 10-0 on the game. Later on, 49ers looking to add to the lead, but Patrick Peterson has other plans. A ridiculous interception by the quarterback. However, that would set up this safety by Antoine Bethea and Eric Armstead not far behind, getting in on Carson Palmer there. 49ers up 12 to nothing. However, the Cardinals do not want to go down like that. Brown, a great spin, a nice juke, and he will take it all the way to the 28-yard line of Niner territory. That would set up this Larry Fitzgerald touchdown, and the Cardinals are right back in this game, 7-12. to And David Johnson liked what happens when his team went into the end zone. He thinks he'll do it as well. The 30-25-20, 15-10-5 touchdown Cardinals an 80 yard touchdown run would put the Cardinals on top before this Phil Dawson field goal would give the lead back to the 49ers 15 to 14 right before halftime under two minutes to go and Brown will find his way into the end zone touchdown for the Cardinals they are on top 21 to 15 then David Johnson again early in the second half building on this Cardinal momentum will take it down to the 16 yard line that would set up this field goal and they would have a 24 to 15 lead but things are about to get crazy down the right side of the field Patrick Peterson another ridiculous interception on the day snatching the ball out of Curly's hands however the 49ers would get the ball back and Sean Drawn looking to deliver would take it all the way down to the 25 yard line fourth and seven but the field goal is blocked and Marcus Cooper will pick this one up and take it to the house the Arizona Cardinals would go for two and not convert so they have a 30 to 15 lead but a monster play again though the Niners do not want to leave just yet Sean Drawn down the left side down to the 29 yard line then first and 10 Chris Owusu breaking tackles on his way to a 26 yard gain that would set up this touchdown run by Carlos Hyde and the 49ers are right back in this game Next up, 49ers looking to tie it up, but Gabbard fumbles the ball, and Buchanan jumps on it for the Cardinals. That would set up this field goal and give them a two-possession lead once again, 33-22. But again, the 49ers will not go away. Vance McDonald down the right side, breaking some tackles from 128-yard line to the other. That would set the 49ers up for this screenplay to Carlos Hyde, and he would take it from 28 yards out to the house. We have a three-point game. The two-point conversion would be good. Andre Ellington, though is not going to let the Niners back into this game. From the 26-yard line all the way to the end zone, he would put this game away, or so he thinks. Fourth and 17, the 49ers just refuse to die. Chris Owusu with a bomb down the right side of the field. We have a three-point game. Once again, it's coming down to the onside kick. The Cardinals would recover, and that would be the ball game. A crazy one back and forth between the two teams. Monster play after monster play. But the Cardinals will win and get their second victory of the year. Next up, we have the New England Patriots. But first, let's go ahead and start practicing. Now, we already have the gold on offense, so we are playing defense today. And again, I'm only going to give this one shot. We're not doing the whole thing where I keep going until I get gold. You guys asked that I only give it one go, so that's what we are doing. And Quentin Patton would deliver the first down there. 49ers, though, Chris Davis would get the sack there. Third attempt, pressure on the way, and Gabbard is going down again. Fourth attempt now, 49ers looking to stop him again, but down the right side, Quentin Patton delivers the first down. 
It is coming down to this last play. Play action rollout. Selleck is unable to get the first down. Good stop by Armstead and company there. And the 49ers defense will get a silver on the day. But we are going to need to see our defense step up a lot more against the New England Patriots. Or we will be in, the, in for a world of hurt. Let's go ahead and check out some of the scores from around the NFL. First up, we have the Browns taking down the Ravens 35-24. to The Browns improved a 7-3 on the season. Robert Griffin with a great game. The Ravens fall to 1-8 on the year. They are going for that number one overall pick. Joe Flacco did have a solid game today, but it was not enough to get the job done prior with two touchdown receptions for the Browns there. Defensively, Correra. Korea? I, I apologize if I said his name wrong. The rookie leading the way in tackles. Two sacks for by Greg Hardy. Ogba, another rookie with one and a half sacks on the day. Frazier, another rookie for the Browns getting an interception. So the rookie stepping up big time here for the Browns. A lot of fumbles being forced on the day. Only three of which would be recovered by Paya, Williams, and Taylor. Then we have the Texans taking down the Jags. 41-26. to The Texans improved to 4-5. and five. The Jags falling to 5-4 and four on the season another big game by Denard Robinson. We saw the same thing last week. He will add three more touchdowns this week. Braxton Miller, the former quarterback, seven catches, 173 yards, and a touchdown for him, adjusting to his new role very well. Brandon Hepburn, Going to lead the way in tackles. Two and a half sacks for Audrick. Look at all the sacks in this game. And yet somehow J.J. Watt was not one of them. Unbelievable. Hal and Amukamara going to have the interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced. None happened. In 38-17, the Broncos would get a win over the Saints. The Broncos improved to 3-7 and seven on the year. The Saints fall to 3-6. and six. One touchdown, one interception by Drew Brees. C.J. Anderson, 114 yards on the ground for him. And two touchdowns to go with it. Booker would add a touchdown as well for the Broncos 155 yards for Demarius Thomas to uh I'm sorry, one touchdown for Willie Sneed as well. Defensively, Aqib Tlaib leading the way with 13 tackles on the day. One and a half sacks for Cameron Jordan. A bunch of players going to add a sack as well. Interceptions, Aqib Tlaib would contribute there as well. Then we have fumbles forced, none on the day. 38-14, to the Rams take down the Jets. The Rams improved to 6-3. and three. The Jets fall to 5-5. Five and five. The Rams continue to lead the NFC West in a shocking change of tides. Every Everybody had pretty much ruled them out and given the division to the Cardinals or Seahawks. But with both of those teams struggling, the Rams have stepped up. And Jared Goff is playing well right now. He's getting it done. Uh, Ten tackles for David Harris. Two sacks for Robert Quinn. One by Aaron Donald. One for Eugene Sims as well. One interception by EJ Gaines for the Rams defense. Then fumbles. We have one by Jordan Jenkins, the rookie. He would recover it as well. The Falcons blowing the Eagles out in the Battle of the Birds. 43 to nothing. The Falcons improved a 7-3. The Eagles fall to 2-7. Matt Ryan over 300 yards. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Pretty good game by Freeman. DeMarco as well really contributing. Julio Jones, six catches for 88 yards and a touchdown. But a blowout game here. This one was not even close. One of the biggest blowouts we have actually seen all season long. One and a half sacks by Jeremy Mincy. Benny Logan getting the only sack there for the Eagles defense. The two interceptions, House and Warlow. Then fumbles forced one by Jarrett. It would not be recovered though. 33 to 14. The Chiefs take down the Panthers. The Chiefs improved to six and three on the year. The Panthers falling to four and five. Cam Newton, one touchdown, two interceptions on the day. Did not even throw for 150 yards. He has really been struggling lately. 116 yards rushing for Jamal Charles. And then Jeremy Macklin, five catches for 128 yards and a touchdown. He is killing it. Fozzie Whitaker did get a touchdown in the backfield. Luke Keekley leading the way with nine tackles. Ely and Holly, or Ely and Ollie. <laughs> Uh, leading the way with two sacks apiece, Marcus Peters going to add another interception to his total on the season. No fumbles forced or recovered. 21 to 16, the Bucks are going to take down the Bears. The Bucks improved to five and four on the year. The Bears fall to three and six. Jay Cutler, no touchdowns, two interceptions on the day. Doug Martin over 100 yards rushing, and then two touchdowns for Williams for the Bears. There, Eddie Royal 90 yards uh, receiving for him. 
Alshon Jeffrey kind of held in check only three catches on the day. Freeman would lead the way in tackles with 11. Sacks is led by Freeman, who actually had the only full sack of the day. A few guys splitting a sack there. Trevathan, David, Amos, and Smith going to get the interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced, none recovered either. 42 to 21. The Vikings are going to beat the Redskins here. The Vikings improved to six and three on the year, so that is a very tight battle. Uh, both the Lions, actually all three, the Lions, Vikings, and Packers, all playing very well for the NFC North. The Raven, uh, Redskins would fall to three and six on the year, but right now, I mean. The Lions are 7-2, I believe. You have the Vikings at 6-3. We'll check out the Packers game next. Uh, but that division is playing very, very well. Kerrigan, 11 tackles leading the way. Then one and a half sacks for Joseph as well. Um, the Bears are 3-6 and six right now. So they're not really too much in contention. Audie Cole would force and recover a fumble. The linebacker out of NC State. Next up, I promised you the Packers, and we have it. 33 to 21. The Packers would get the victory over the Titans. The Packers improved to six and three. So you have the seven and two Lions, the six and three Vikings, and the six and three Packers. This division is killing it. The Titans, on the other hand, fall to four and six on the year. Adams had two touchdowns to go with his six catches on the day. Defensively, Bradford will lead the way in tackles with Cersei each at eleven. Williamson, Matthews, Peppers, and Daniels each getting a full sack on the day. Interceptions won by Sam Shields, the veteran cornerback out of Miami. Fumbles forced won by Bryant, won by McCourty, neither of which would be recovered. 38 to 10. The Chargers are going to take down the Dolphins. The Chargers sitting at 8 and 2 on the season. The Dolphins falling to 2 and 7 on the year. 68 yards rushing by Melvin Gordon. He would not get a touchdown. Nate Washington, though, 97 yards and a touchdown for him. Keenan Allen. Allen would add 86 yards and two touchdowns for the Chargers. Chris Culliver leading the way with 10 tackles, one and a half sacks by three different guys, including the rookie Joey Bosa. He continues to play well for this Chargers defense there. No interceptions on the day. Two fumbles forced, one by Joey Bosa, one by Leon McFadden. They would each recover as well. 37 to 16. The Cowboys take down the Steelers. The Cowboys improved to 6 and 3 on the year. The Steelers falling to 5 and 4, despite having two of the best offensive players in the NFL. Le'Veon Bell contributing again, 137 yards and a touchdown for him. Ezekiel Elliott would get a touchdown. Alfred Morris would add two. However, Antonio Brown held in check today. Look at this. No catch. Catches on the day for Antonio Brown. Good job by the uh, Cowboys defense there. Shazier leading the way in tackles. Randy Gregory adding three sacks for the Cowboys defense there. Sean Lee getting an interception on the day. Fumbles forced. We have none. 28 to 24. The Patriots would take down the Seahawks. 49ers, of course, playing the Patriots next. And that means Tom Brady. Three touchdowns, no interceptions on the day. The Patriots improved to 4 4 and 1. They did have that tie with the Bengals. The Seahawks falling to 4 and 5 on the year. This is definitely going to be a very tough matchup for the 49ers. Um, the Patriots have been struggling a bit more than anticipated, though. They do seem to be getting their legs back under them, though, stringing together some wins lately. Uh, Bennett and McDaniel splitting a sack. No interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced, and we have an, uh, one by Bobby Wagner. He would recover it as well. Last game, we have the Bengals taking on the Giants, 24-21. to The Bengals improved to 5-3-1. and The Giants fall to 5-4 and on the year. Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill splitting carries Bernard getting 4.7 yards to carry Odell Beckham Jr. seven catches 147 yards and a touchdown for him pretty solid game by AJ Green as well Jeremy Hill would also find his way into the end zone out of the backfield there sacks Michael Johnson leading the way with three Ray Maluga with one Ray Maluga would also get an interception Georgia Loca and Dansby making it happen as well and then fumbles forced we have none on the day Players of the week, we have Aaron Rodgers throwing for four touchdown passes. Adi Cole, Ray Maluga, who we just saw, and then Denard Robinson, who has been killing it lately. Three rushing touchdowns, 110 yards for him. We're checking out some draft stories. Take away Sean Kendall's interception, a touchdown return late in the fourth, and Pittsburgh would have lost big. This is that strong safety we've been scouting. And then Andrew Colbertson has been suspended for the remainder of the season for missing practices. Scouting-wise, we have Roy Lacey out of Nebraska. These 
projected as a fourth round talent though this guy here out of lehigh three four tackler projected undrafted talent i don't know what's happening there this guy projected mid second round but with first round talent though sap out of pittsburgh is a guy to keep an eye on for us maybe a good second round pick that we could take then we have clifton way another projected second round guy with first round talent these are two very good guys that might be nice pickups for us then we have john christie out of appalachian state projected in the early third round but undrafted talent rip him gregory mccauley late first round talent projected to go there a very strong outside linebacker class then we have will bain late second round guy maybe a guy worth keeping an eye on as well as we check out the patriots lineup led by tom brady 93 overall jimmy garoppolo behind him Legarrette blunt and Dion lewis going to be the running backs devilin going to be a fullback there then you have julian edelman and danny amadola a great one-two punch jerry Jericho Kotri provides a veteran presence as well than Chris Hogan. Then Gronkowski and Martellus Bennett. One of the best uh, combinations of tight ends in the NFL, maybe ever. Those two are great together. The offensive line, though, not all that good here for the Patriots. And that is one thing the 49ers might be able to take advantage of, especially with DeForest Buckner and Eric Armstead playing so very well lately. Uh, but when you have Tom Brady there, he's going to make the right decisions either way. Jamie Collins, an outside linebacker. Dante Hightower in the middle with Curtis Lofton there. And then Ninkovich at right outside linebacker. Malcolm Butler and Logan Ryan. Ryan, a nice one-two combo at cornerback. A pretty young combo as well. Then you have Devin McCourty at free safety and Patrick Chung at uh, strong safety. Definitely one of the better teams we've played all season long. It is going to be a tough matchup for this 49ers team. We will see how they can do, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did, and I will catch you all later. Peace.